Hi, I'm Susan Brown, director of the Center for Better Bones in Syracuse, New York. Today I have my friend with me. We call him Bonaparte. With Bonaparte, I'm going to show you a bit about hip fractures so you can actually learn to understand where the most common hip fractures occur, where they're located on the skeleton. This is interesting in and of itself, but it's also interesting because when you look at your bone density reports, you see that they measure the density of several different spots of the hip. So when they talk about the neck of the hip or the neck of the femur, when they talk about the trochanter, you're gonna understand a little bit more about what they mean when you see where those locations are in the skeleton. So let's take a look at Bonaparte's hip and see if we can locate where you tend to fracture. So here we have Bonaparte, and you see this is the pelvis bone. It connects right with the hip. Now this is actually, this very long bone is what we call the femur, it's the leg bone. And it goes from the knee right on up to the ball of the hip. So the top part of the hip, the ball, the ball and socket, we call the head of the femur. Then we have this narrow space, which is called the neck of the femur. You might have seen this on your bone density test. They measure the density of this neck of the femur. Then as you move down the femur, you have a big protrusion here, which is called the trochanter, the greater trochanter. And then actually on the back side, you have a little hump back here you can barely see called the lesser trochanter. Now what's interesting about that is we're going to see some fractures occur in this trochantric area as well. So if we think about fractures, there are four types of hip fractures. The first one is the head of the hip, the femoral head, right up here. This is a kind of unusual fracture, generally occurring from some sort of trauma, like a car accident, where this joint of the hip, the ball of the hip, actually gets dislocated, and occasionally you'll get fractures right in or cracks right in that head of the hip due to trauma, not a common osteoporotic fracture. As you move down to the neck of the hip, this narrow area where the main leg bone joins this ball of the hip, that the ball and socket, this is where you see about half of the fractures. They're called femoral neck fractures, and it's right through this narrow area. Now as you move down, we come to this trochanter, there's another very common type of hip fracture, and it's called a trochantic fracture. And it actually occurs between this protrusion, the greater trochanter, and the lesser. So it's a fracture right like along in here. A fracture right like along in here. Those are three of the major fractures, hip fractures. The other one is a kind of a new sort of fracture. It's called a subtrochantric fracture. It's down in this part of the leg. And this type of fracture is very um, atypical, and in fact, these days they find it occurring from the use of these strong biphosphonate drugs. It's a fracture right along in the upper part of the leg bone, a very unusual fracture. And it is actually called the Fosamass fracture by many. So you have this lower leg fracture, very uncharacteristic, um, but related to drug therapy often. You have the intertrochantic fracture, you have the fracture of the neck of the hip, and then a possible fracture of the ball of the hip. Those are the characteristic typical hip fractures, about half in the neck, half in the trochantric. Then you also get uh, other types of fractures, which I certainly associate with hip fractures, which are pelvic fractures. This whole area you see is the pelvis. It actually is an area that protects so many internal organs. Um, you can have a pelvic fracture, and those are uh, sometimes dangerous in the sense that many internal organs are there, so sometimes you get internal bleeding that you don't recognize. So we kind of, the doctor's always looking at these fractures to make sure there's no internal bleeding. The neck of the fracture, the neck of the hip, that has its own complications uh, because sometimes the circulation, the blood flow to the hip socket is inhibited, so that's uh, sometimes a little hard to heal. The trochantric fractures are a little bit easier to heal, and all of them, of course, there's a tendency to stabilize them with nails, stabilize them with screws, maybe put plates in to make this really firm again. Perhaps a third of all hip fractures end up in a, a total hip replacement, and the rest of them are just able to heal with fixation. During their lifetime, one out of six women in the U.S. will experience a hip fracture. The average age of hip fracture is 80. If you live to be 90, the chances that one out of three will fracture a hip.
we at the Center for Better Bones, we're looking to create lifelong healthy bones so that, so that we can well live into 90 and beyond and have strong, healthy bones, strong, healthy hips. So what are a few tips I'd give you? One, I'd say pay special attention to vitamin D. There is rare rarely, rarely, rarely a hip fracture that is not associated with vitamin D deficiencies. Studies show this over and over again. Keep your vitamin D level up. Number two, try to conduct lifelong exercise. Even walking a half an hour a day will reduce your risk of hip fracture by perhaps 40%. And if you can do any higher impact exercises, that will definitely help. As we put impact on our feet, on our legs, we stimulate the hip joint. The stimulation causes it to grow. And exercise, vitamin D, then also pay attention to balance. It's important to remember that 95% of all hip fractures occur because people fall. And only very few of them are spontaneous fractures without a fall. So you want to be aware, practice balance, look at Tai Chi, look at yoga, study balance with your health practitioners. It can really be very helpful. And remember that it's never too late to build strong, healthy bones and have a functional, healthy hip for the rest of your life. This is Susan Brown, wishing you better bones and better body. See you next time.